the film star figure of Pamela Anderson, for many women the ideal image. To achieve it, some unknowingly risk death on the operating table, whilst other patients face disfigurement from treatments sold to them for thousands of pounds. But I'm ashamed to even go to my friends, my neighbours. I feel so embarrassed to see what I look like. Tonight, the clinics that exploit the vulnerable for fat profits. Some of these clinics are like butcher's slabs, where people end up maimed both physically and mentally. I can't remember his words. He just told, he told me she had died. She went in as a fit, happy, healthy lady, and she's come out in a coffin. You think you've starred in a horror film? I can't believe it happened to you. America, where dreams can be turned into reality if you have the money. Cindy Jackson is a walking advertisement for cosmetic surgery properly performed. Over the past seven years, I've spent $100,000 on cosmetic surgery. I've had my upper and lower eyes done my nose done twice, my upper lip made larger, fat taken out of my backside and injected into my lips, and also into my nose to mouth lines. I've had an upper and lower facelift, a mask facelift, three chemical peels, dermabrasion on my uh, cheeks and forehead. I've had laser surgery on my forehead, jawline liposuction. Margaret Trussler spent 4,000 pounds on cosmetic surgery for a tummy tuck and it nearly killed her. It's one of my biggest, my worst nightmares. I can't believe it happened to me. I still suffer. I still have sleepless nights. I still can't believe that this happened to me. Rosalind Zapponi paid £3,500 for the same operation, and it did kill her. I can see nothing beyond getting to bed tonight, and then hoping that we make it through another day tomorrow. I can see no further than that. I don't... My hopes, my dreams and my ambitions died with her. So we first of all need to think about the midline. Private cosmetic surgery is a £250 million a year business. Some is medically necessary, but much is prompted by vanity or the glossy magazines constantly extolling the perfect figure. Most procedures or operations like this one for a tummy tuck are successful, but a distressingly large number do go wrong. About 60,000 people a year now go in for plastic surgery of some kind or, or another in the private sector, and about 20% of those then end up in the National Health Service getting the botched up job put right or attempting to get the job put right. That's very costly for the NHS and of course it means a lot of distress for the people involved. LST has 15 clinics throughout the country. They offer surgery but they specialize in treatments for hair, facial and skin problems. They also specialize in dubious and high pressure sales techniques. I've seen sales staff reduce young girls and ladies to tears humiliating them and making them feel completely inadequate. And while those ladies are sobbing in their handkerchiefs, those sales staff indeed were looking at me over their heads, winking and smiling because they know they've got a sale. We apply to join the LST staff and send in an undercover reporter. Oh, hello. I've got an appointment to see Mr. Stewart. My name's David Anderson. OK. Let's take a seat then. Thanks very much. One of the biggest private sector surgical companies is Transform. They have 15 clinics like this one at Bowdoin near Altrincham in Cheshire. They advertise extensively in women's magazines. They also have some very distressing case histories. Margaret Trussler, 30 years a nurse, age 59. The clinic, Transform. The surgeon, Mr. Kong Bok Gan from Malaya. The operation tidying up a previous tummy tuck. Transform agreed to do it after two other surgeons had refused. He said I would be in and out in 24 hours 
and he would um, see me periodically after that. Margaret was sent home to Worthing three days after her operation, but her wound was badly infected. I had a look at the wound and it was awful. I've never seen anything so awful in my life. It was green, it was very pussy. Two days later, Margaret was back at the clinic. A week later, she was given a second operation and then told she needed a third. Three general anaesthetics in two weeks terrified her. I was so distressed, I rang my daughter in Germany and told her where my will was, because I said, I know I'll die, I'm surely die. And that's how I really felt. I was really ill. Bear in mind, I'd been infected now for two weeks. She survived, but spent a month in the clinic. After the third operation, she herself diagnosed a deep vein thrombosis in the leg. As a nurse, she recognised the danger signs. It can certainly kill you because it's a blood clot. It can travel very quickly. Unless you know the mechanism of the body. You know, you, you don't tell people you've got a pain in the leg. Just thank goodness that I did know the mechanism of the body. Rosalind Zapponi, aged 45. The clinic, Transform. The surgeon, Mr. Kong Bok Gan. The operation, a tummy tuck. Rosalind Zapponi also developed a deep vein thrombosis. She was not a nurse. She didn't recognize the symptoms and she died. Harang explained that I'd been left a message to ring in connection with Mrs. Zapponi. Phone goes very quiet, whispering in the background. And then a gentleman comes on the line whose name I'll never remember, who told me, and I can't remember his words, who just told, who told me she had died. I said to Dr Gann on the phone, would you tell me, would Rosalind be alive now had she not, you know, agreed to have the surgery? And he said, without question, she definitely would be alive. So I said, she took a risk in having this surgery. And he said, you could say that. Diana Ashton, aged 49. The clinic transform at Wokingham. The operation, liposculpture to reshape her legs. Diana Ashton had liposuction in 12 places. Like several other patients, she says she wasn't fully anaesthetized and was in great pain throughout. When he finished and I stood up, I more or less, I, I, I just sort of collapsed and they just took me into recovery. Where I sat in just a wicker chair for about half an hour and um, I just wanted to go home. So then my husband came in and he stood there. And as I stood up, I didn't expect these 12 holes to seep out fluid and blood. And I was like a tea strainer. And my husband looked at me and said, I'm sorry, I can't take it. And he just went out. So therefore I collapsed back in the chair again. I wanted to get myself out of there because I wanted to get home. And so therefore they stood me up again where they plugged these 12 holes. And I had to have all the, all the, um, bandages and the things put on and in the end I looked like a Michelin man I couldn't sit I couldn't stand we couldn't get me into the car because I couldn't bend I feel that I'm transformed I've ruined my life because my legs are twisted my kneecap has got a big lump on it I cannot anymore wear short skirts bathing costume I always have to wear trousers because my legs are so bad consultant surgeon Clive Orton is currently operating to repair the damage done to five of Transform's patients. He's highly critical of the sales methods they employ and the advice their patients are given. When a patient answers a Transform advert, they are either visited or get to see somebody who is called a counsellor. Now, a counsellor has a particular medical significance. but The people that they get to see are not counsellors in the true sense, but are salespeople. They therefore do not get advised about whether an operation is appropriate for them, but they get sold an operation. This patient, who wants to remain anonymous, was sold an operation at a clinic which is now closed. After eight years, she's still fighting for full compensation. I went to see Mr Napa for a breast implant operation, and he examined me approximately one hour before the operation. Over the next year, I had to go back and see him about eight times for corrective surgery. And 
Each time it just seemed to make the situation worse. This last eight years has been just full of anguish. I've lost out in my career. I've lost out in personal relationships. And I've also lost out financially. And I just wish I'd never seen the man. The man is Graham Napper, the surgeon who carried out the operation. He's now working for Transform. So is Kong Bok Gan. What about the complaints against him? Any operations you have, even the best professor, you know, any surgeon, there will always be, in his lifetime, will we have problems, complications. And do you regret when you've had complications? Of course I do. You must regret a lot. I, I do, because, uh, you know, you, things, things that are beyond your control. You can have infection, bleeding. Lack of competence? No, I, I don't think so. We've done 25,000 patients and one has died. We're terribly sad about that. But, you know, at the end of the day... Still one too many. Absolutely, I couldn't agree with you more. But you take any medical establishment in the world, the national health, private medicine, anywhere you'd like to go, and you interview them as you're interviewing me now, and they would have to hold up their hands and say the same thing. It does happen once in a while. I think, in all fairness, if you go back a couple of years, uh, because, particularly with the liposculpture, when it was very, very busy, I think we maybe made one or two mistakes, which we have since uh, rectified. Well, not as far as the people we've seen are concerned. Well, they've, still got, they've still got legs that they won't show. Well, again, you're talking about out of 25,000 people, you're going to find some like that, with, with, again, with any company in the world, particularly in surgery. Again, it's not an exact science. It's not an exact science. Cosmetic surgeons proliferate in Hollywood where facelifts are as common as Cadillacs. It only takes two stitches to hold up the whole uh, facelift. She will look better for the rest of her life because she's had this surgery. Is that hurting you, sweetie? Cindy Jackson was born in America, but now works in London as an advisor on cosmetic surgery. She was among those at a conference in Jacksonville, Florida, where top cosmetic surgeons watched live operations with lasers. After seven years and a series of operations, she's no doubt about the value of competent cosmetic surgery. I didn't have the right face. I didn't have the right body. I had a genius IQ. My IQ is 164. But if for a woman, it's not enough. And I thought, what would happen if I took all my money that I inherited and, and changed myself into the most beautiful woman that I could make of myself? This could be considered kind of a Barbie doll image, but Barbie reflects the Western ideal. She's a product of, of the way that women want to look and the way that men have, no doubt a committee of men have designed her to look. It's astounding how much my life has changed since the surgery. Men who wouldn't have looked twice at me now asked me out. Men fall in love with me now who wouldn't have, wouldn't have really been that interested in me. The world is at my feet. Back home and our undercover reporter is well into his job interview with LST. His interviewer, Michael Stewart Horwell, a former butcher, introduces himself as Mr. Stewart. He's frank about the qualities he's looking for. Are you looking for people like myself or are you looking for people with more with medical Knowledge. I, I, I've got their medical knowledge. I have nothing to do. I'm not a doctor. I'm there to present and sell and paint a picture and sell that dream back to that patient. Okay? We're salespeople. That's what we can do. Our reporter is promised he'll be fully trained. Ian Kroll, another former LST clinic manager, recalls the lessons he learned. It's just really preying on people's weaknesses. Um, people who come in for cosmetic surgery are already worried about their looks, they're self-conscious, they're not confident already, and if you are confident sat behind a desk with lots of paraphernalia around you, magnifying glasses, lights, medical terms and references, really you are putting them in a position where they are much more worried than when they came in, and then you just prey on that and go for the kill. It's not really tricks of the trade at all, it's, it's like acting really. LST job advertisements promise basic pay plus commission. Howard Fole was trained to spot wealthy customers they could milk. I was actually trained and instructed, for example, to look at bulges in people's pockets. 
to see if they possibly had a wallet or a purse on them, ladies and gentlemen. I was told to look out for that sort of thing. I was told to look at rings and jewellery. I was told to look at clothes, to actually try and pick out if someone is wearing la uh, a label, a designer label. After 40 minutes, our reporter is hired and told he'll be fully kitted out. On Monday there, I'll get a white coat for you. What size you take? Uh, 40. 40. We were given a, u a uniform when we started at LST, um, very similar to a doctor's uniform, a, a white coat. Um, I was always encouraged to wear my glasses because it made me look older and more distinguished, like a doctor. LST's treatments are every bit as dubious as their sales methods. George Sangster, aged 75, born in Brazil, former opera singer, clinic, LST in Harley Street, London, complaint, facial blemishes. The blemishes were simply three freckles George wanted removed. He was given ointment. It turned his face black and his hands bright pink. I'm ashamed to even go to my friends, my neighbours. I feel so embarrassed to see what I look like. Some people believe that I get some kind of a disease that I pick up from somewhere. Every time he attended the clinic, he was actually blamed for his treatment, turning his skin that colour. He was actually told by doctors and sales staff that it's his fault because he must be applying something wrong. He must be doing it wrong himself at home. I have to live with it. I'm so ashamed to go to the shop, to go. In the night, mostly, I go out because I'm a shame. My friends don't know me no more. My kids don't even come around me much as they used to before. In all, George was charged £11,000 for treatment that not only didn't work, it made everything worse. He had to sell his house to raise the money. If somebody came to a bona fide dermatologist with three freckles, if they were treatable, they'd have been treated probably with cryotherapy, a form of freezing therapy, they would have got rid of them uh, with one episode. Um, otherwise, he'd have been given a, a hydroquinone base cream, uh, which would have lightened them. It may not have get, got rid of them completely, which would have cost him the price of an NHS prescription, which is 525. So I think that the, the price certainly seems to me quite outrageous, uh, particularly as it's now left him very disfigured. Uh, and I imagine he's very upset about the appearance of his skin now. What is your reaction to somebody who comes in to have three freckles removed and ends up looking like that. I know the gentleman concerned. Okay, this is from Harley Street. And he came to me and he'd had treatment several years ago. Went back to Brazil. He came back. He said, I had a brilliant result, Mr. Stewart. He said, but I've got in the sun. Can I have some more treatment to do it properly? And he was very, very happy. And that's his words, not mine. You're saying he's very happy. That's a statement from a, a person that dealt with this person. That's a I don't, I don't that is deal with That's a statement with from an unqualified person whose only qualifications are in the butchery trade. No, he doesn't need any further qualification than that. No, because he's consult. a salesman. I'm just hair, skin specialist. That's my field. All right. This is another salesman. We've sent in another undercover reporter with a secret cameraman posing as her boyfriend to test LST claims about hair and skin treatments. She says she's suffering slight hair loss. Hair and scalp and skin. Oh, so you've been, but you've been through some sort yes. of medical training. Yeah, oh, I wouldn't be allowed if I wasn't. All right. Do you, do you train with this company or train initially? LST, yes, oh, I see they train you. My training actually purely consisted of reading a manual, memorizing scripts, um, getting to know the costs, memorising the costs of the treatments, and literally sitting watching sales staff and salespeople in action. Right, it'll start heating up in a few minutes. It shouldn't get too... After the salesman has examined her hair and scalp, our reporter is given a series of tests and treatments, beginning with steam cleaning of the scalp. The verdict? Exactly as per script. Did you notice you're going a little bit pink, a little bit Yes, pink? yes. Well, that's actually telling us that there's not 100% blood supply to the surface. Right. Right, so this is where, you know, this is where the hair fall could be coming from, the majority of it. She said there was quite a lot of flakiness around there. Yes, yeah, saw that. Towards that area. But I have a serious problem. You have got a problem. I'm not going to lie. There's no point in lying, because I wouldn't be here otherwise. Uh, the condition of the scalp is not in the condition it should be in. So we can, we'll stop the bowl and promise you that now. So we can safely say that we can virtually stop balding altogether. Stop the balding? 
Is there any balding? We ask a qualified trichologist. Right. Well, I can find nothing wrong with your scalp or your hair. Um, you've got a high density uh, level of hair. Um, strong. There's, there's no abnormalities at all with your hair. So I'm not going bald? You're definitely not going bald. I no. have nothing to worry about. Definitely not, no. Our medical team are there for hair and scalp and skin. They're specialists? They are specialists. They are the best that money can buy in the UK without a shadow of a doubt. So tell us how much they're going to cost then. Right. Um, for the medical, the hair treatment and all the products that we used in conjunction at home, um, for the whole lot, it's £1,144. Mm -hmm. Right? And how much is the maintenance? The yearly maintenance is usually dependent. It's around about £1,950. But that is a yearly maintenance. So all in about £3,000? Yeah. The first thing that happens before we do any treatment whatsoever, that lady would have had a medical. She would have had a blood sample taken. Those would have to be dealt with before the doctor would even see her. It doesn't and get then, away from the fact that he was trying but, to call but, but her. The, the, the young manager may be a bit vigorous, but that doesn't mean to say the lady, if she didn't need treatment, would receive treatment from LST. What about the thousands and thousands of people that are happy with LST? Will they know whether they've had a treatment they even needed? Sorry? Will they know they've had value for money? Well, well, the, Not the, necessarily. But, but can I explain something further to you then? I wouldn't be in business very long if we didn't have any result. Advertisements for cosmetic treatment worry people like Anne Cluid, MP, a long-time campaigner for tighter overall regulation. You can't open a paper without finding an advert for a step-in, step-out uh, clinic or repair yourself by mail order almost. Uh, we can do any kind of job for you, it's no problem, and uh, it, it won't cause you any problem afterwards. And uh, obviously I think the, the advertising has to be tightened up. The Advertising Standards Authority did intervene over one advertisement last year. Today, they seem complacent. With an advertisement like this, um, it does actually say that a beautiful bust line can now be yours. Now, some people might quibble over that. But it doesn't actually say that everybody who has this sort of treatment can suddenly achieve the most beautiful figure. Also, if you look at any advertisement that appears in a publication, they will all have been retouched to some extent. Even the cover of a magazine will have been touched to make it look more attractive. And it would be unrealistic to expect an advertiser to use an unattractive model who obviously doesn't have the sort of figure that you might aspire to in their advertising. So although there may be some points with this ad that, that we could address, on the whole, this sort of advertisement wouldn't cause problems under the advertising code. The ultimate answer could be an official register. I'm very much for, I think we should have a form of specialist uh, register so that people uh, can find out whether a doctor is trained to undertake whatever it is that they're, they're seeking. Uh, I think the system probably that they've got in America of board certification, so you walk into a doctor's surgery and on his wall he will have his certificates in whatever he's trained. Whatever regulations might be introduced, they're too late for Alan Walsh. He's left with his memories, struggling to come to terms with the loss of Roslyn, the mother of their seven-year-old son. Did everything together. Just like we worked together, we came here together because we wanted to spend time together. We worked together. All our dreams and all our hopes and all our ambitions were together. <laughs>